Today tastes like heading out the door and driving into town. It tastes like grabbing snacks and a Coke and singing as loud as you can. Today tastes like anything could happen. And it never tasted this good. Summer tastes better with Coca-Cola. Wherever you're going this week, don't forget to grab an ice-cold, refreshing Coca-Cola from Albertsons or Safeway. Ebro Laura Rosenberg, good morning. Friday, we made it. We here together we again. Here. We are here. <laughs> Sing. Sing. Yeah, Finally. Man. Survive. Yo, last night, you know, uh, Laura Styles was a mama Styles was on the town, the whole family. I seen y'all at a fashion show, bro. Oh, y'all my was, God. Y'all was with, like, you know, one of the flyest families out, you know. Russell Wilson, and Sierra, and the kids. Uh. I know. Yeah, we really. Um, so Russell Wilson uh, made a debut for his line, his kids line, and it was the grand opening of the rookie store in Union Square. So they they had a fashion show with all the football players. I'm sure you guys would know who the football players were, but <laughs> damn, kids. Lord, damn. Uh, Victor Cruz's daughter um, walked in the show. I saw Fab there. And his kids. And, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, you know, all the who's who kids was there. But it was super cute. My girl Dasha Polanco, Adrian Bailon was there. Everyone was supporting Sierra and Russell Wilson and their foundation. You know, they have a foundation that um, gives relief, COVID relief. So it was a a, a nice combination of uh, just like everybody it was there to show love. But, yeah, and for the grand opening of the Rookie Store in Union Square, which is a kid store. It's mad cute. Super and, cute. Uh, super dope. So you told uh, Russell and Sierra we love them? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sierra remembered like, you? She was just kind of, I don't I don't know if she remembered me or not, but she was super sweet. <laughs> she Nicest was super, person you know, ever, right? Ain't she? Super sweet. Nicest person ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. Good vibes. There you go. Well, look, man, it's time for some shenanigans. Uh, Shawnee Culture was, uh, you know, I got word that Shawnee Culture was, uh, I think he was... Streets was talking. It was like, yo, Shawnee Culture's on like a rooftop somewhere filming, uh, shooting the culture movement oh, yesterday yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the streets was hitting me. Like, <laughs> yo, I seen Shawnee on a rooftop. How'd you hear that? Doing a show or something. Yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, now, nah, you know, each and every Monday on Hot 97's IG Live, I do Culture Movement Monday. Yeah. So that's everything that's a pipeline for the culture. You know what I'm saying? So clothes, fashion, artists, music, entrepreneurs, whatever it is, I try to create a platform. So we was uh, recording the artists on a roof in Dumbo. Yeah. It was uh, super dope. Hey. Yo, I got my ear to the streets, B. Anything moving? <laughs> wow. They be hitting the, the old man like, yo, I, this is what I seen, man. Wow. They be oh my God, reporting back. Yo, that's crazy. Well, not, but it's not like a, on some like, it's just on some like, yo, just in case things go left. You know what I'm saying? We sent up the bat signal. <laughs> me, and Issa, okay, okay. me and Issa got to suit up. Fly you know what out, I'm saying? Fly out. Okay. Pull up. You know what that's I mean? That's, that's it. Right. That's all they saying. I appreciate it, the guy. Yeah, that's it. That's it. They just like, yeah, just so you know. You know I'm saying? I'm like, okay, yeah. everything smooth? All right, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> shenanigan time on a Friday. Hey. Let's do it. Woo. We got Anthony and Renee. Yo, we might have to play some Renee this morning. Renee, that's one of your favorite songs? It actually is. Yeah, we're going to have to play that Lost Boys this morning. It's so depressing, though. I mean, only because you've analyzed the lyrics, Rosenberg. <laughs> but, like, I mean, in general, it's a bop. You know what I mean? No, no. It, I, I agree it's still a confirmed bop. Just a little sad bop at the it end. It is. It is. It doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. <laughs> but, Renee, that's a joint we're going to play. Man, come on, man. A- Anthony. Anthony. Yo. Yo, what up, my guy? You all right? Yeah, I work. Where are you working? Uh, maintenance supervisor for private school. There okay. it is. There it is. Wait, so now you guys uh you guys ain't out yet? Or you you gotta nah. work through the through the off. We work through everything. Whew. Shout out to all the maintenance guys. What school you at? It's one of them super nice joints? Uh St. John's Prep. Okay. Oh yeah. High school. Yeah, hey. In Astoria. Hey. hey. Nice. Anthony got the gig over there, B. Uh, Super gig. Now, Renee, where are you headed this morning? I'm actually headed to work as well. Where do you work? 
I work at Cube Smart, the storage facility. I'm a general manager. Popping, popping. You got the you got the discount? I do. I mean, <laughs> listen. Listen, you know, everybody's a winner today. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh. Pull up and ask for Renee. Renee. Yes, definitely. Met her on the way home from John Jay. You know what I'm saying? True. True. Smoking, smoking boom in the whole nine. <laughs> Renee, who you want to uh, represent you today? Me or Laura Stiles? Mm. Laura Stiles. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hey, you, Renee. Listen, I, I got a prize this morning, too, okay? Uh, the winner is going to... Be able to hang out at Hot 97's exclusive uh, 4th of July rooftop barbecue featuring uh, uh, Brooklyn's own Young Devin. So everyone who attends will also get a chance to win Summer Jam tickets. Uh, music by DJ Ooh. Drewski and it's all made hot by Long Island Chef Lamar. 60 seconds on the clock. Shani with the question. question. Let's play Laura Never Loses. Right here. Here. Go. Go. Friday vibes. Okay. All right. Who confirmed he is having a seventh child? Laura. Bro. Laura. Nick Cannon. That is correct. Six Seven. days after his twins were born. I didn't even Crazy. know. Yeah, um, what was the what was Istanbul called? Ebro. Uh, Ebro. Uh, Istanbul was called uh, Constantinople. That's right. Before 1930. Uh, who was told by Usher? That Laura. Laura. T Pain that he ruined music. That he ruined music <laughs> is it, correct. Man. From what grain is the Japanese Ebro. spirit? Ebro. Uh, the Japanese spirit um, sake is made from rice. That is correct. It's Thai game. Who has announced he? Who has announced he is going on the off? Ebro. Uh, Ebro. Uh, J Cole and Twenty One Savage. That is correct. Um, name the coffee shop in the sitcom Ebro. Friends. Ebro. Ooh. The coffee oh, shop in the sitcom Friends. Whites oh, only. Incorrect. No. That's Three. not. Uh, Essential perks. Never Central watch perks friends. Is correct. Tie Ooh, game. Good tie, late. Okay. Friday. Okay. Uh, <laughs> whites only. <laughs> no. <laughs> that might have been a sign in the window. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it wasn't oh the name of the sky. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Um, while on a boat and facing forward. Ebro. What? Ebro. You are facing starboard. Starboard. Star star starboard. That may be correct, but incorrect. Oh. I'll finish the question. Damn it, man. While on a boat a boat and facing forward, which side is starboard? On a boat and facing forward. To your right? To your right? Is that your final answer? Yes, what? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, did the game rules change? That is correct. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Gosh, I was like, I didn't get this one. <laughs> Laura wins, Laura wins. Renee, on the way home from John Renee. Jay. You got some shout outs? <laughs> I do. I want to shout out to my family, grandmothers. Shout out to you guys. I listen to you every morning. You're amazing. Thank oh, you, Renee. Beautiful. I Thank love you, Renee. Renee. Yo, man, I love Renee too. Let's play the tune. Which one? The original or the remix? I think the remix is the one that is is the one one, right? That's the one, yeah. Remix, yeah, is the, yeah that's, that's the one. That's the bop. Yeah. Today tastes like heading out the door and driving into town. It tastes like grabbing snacks and a coke and singing as loud as you can. Today tastes like anything could happen, and it never tasted this good. Summer tastes better with Coca-Cola. Wherever you're going this week, don't forget to grab an ice-cold, refreshing Coca-Cola from Albertsons or Safeway. Some new albums out today you should experience if you like raps. You know what I'm saying? Them raps. DJ Drama is all over that Tyler, the Creator album that just dropped 16 records. And then, you know what I'm saying, the, the ever so talented uh, Dynamic Doja Cat album is also out, mm -hmm. which is, woo, we got to play some things off of that, too. We're going to have to play some Tyler and some Doja today. Mm. You know what I mean? You know what I mean?
Yo, Doja got a regular with Ariana Grande, The Weeknd, J.I.D. Of course, y'all know SZA. She got Young Thug on the album, too. Wow. Yeah. That's dope. Doja. Doja. Dope. Let's go flashing lights, Laura Styles. Lauren Styles got the 411 on the flash lights, lights, you know you're lights. Ready for the flash light. And Lauren Styles gonna put us on. So um, Snoop Dogg and Kevin Hart are to recap the Tokyo Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's though? So Where good. though? On NBC? <laughs> Yes. So according to Deadline, Kevin Hart and Snoop Dogg are to helm. It's called Olympic Highlights, a feature comedy recap commentary for uh, for Peacock. It's under the NBC Universal umbrella. Bravo. But this is so dope. It's That's a great idea. Right? Whoever approved this, thought of this, bravo. <laughs> you want yeah. people to pay attention to the Olympics? This is one of, one of the great many things happening right here. So I'm yeah. guessing that they'll just watch They'll just show them stuff and they'll like do it from a studio and I'm sure make fun of things of the day. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think and just so. be crazy. But yo, Shikari, that girl Shakari Richardson too is another reason people watching the Olympics. Of course. And then also the the women running for Jamaica, another re- a reason people watching the Olympics. The track and field thing is shaping up out here. U.S. gymnastics. Let's oh go. yeah, and Simone Biles. Yeah. So it should be interesting because you know there was a lot of. You know, a lot of people were very hesitant, and, and the Tokyo Olympics are not going to have the same amount of, uh, you know, like, not a lot of people, no one can attend, I think. It's only for Tokyo residents, and even then, I've heard that Tokyo residents are kind of hesitant. They're still, because COVID is still kind of crazy over there. So, this is a great way to bring attention to it. But, yo, with Snoop Dogg, yo, Snoop Dogg stays with a job, right? Like, mm-hmm. he stays I mean, hardest working man in showbiz. Talk it's, to him. It's so good to see, and he does such a great job. So, yeah, that's dope. That's your Flesh and Light Report. The time is 7.03. Today is going to be another beautiful day. High of 81, guys. Alternate side parking rules are in effect. Look, coming up, we got congratulations. You played yourself, Rudy Giuliani. I mean, that's a layup. What? What? You did something again? Bruh, it don't stop. This is... (laughs) Mm. It's, it don't stop, bro. It just don't stop. Man. You know, so we got that up. Anybody else need to be on there, let us know. Friday Vibes with Ebro Laura Rosenberg. This hour made hot by Premier Boxing Champions. QHDFM, HD1 New York. 97 minutes commercial free. Yeah. Commercial free coming up at 7 with Ebro in the morning. Hot 97. Oh. Friday. What the weather talking about, Laura Styles? What we doing today with the weather? With the it's weather. It's going to be nice. Another beautiful day. It's a high of 81 degrees. A little cloudy, but still, it's going to be nice. There it is. Ebro Laura Rosenberg back again, closing out the week strong. Yo, next week, it's kind of one of those crazy weeks, man. July 4th falls on a weekend this year. Okay. This year, July 4th fell on a Sunday. But man. how many people just going like, Vamp out by like Thursday, just pew 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 pew. Because if you're gonna can. take some extra days, this next week is one of those weeks where you use vacation days and turn it into a whole situation, uh. like a six day weekend. Because uh. you take because July Fourth falls on a weekend, so they're not really gonna try to give you no days off. So you're gonna have to take them. Right, so what? It's on a Sunday, you said? Yeah, no, they're giving you a day off, though. What, what's the day off? We Monday. Have, we have Monday off? Yeah, Monday after the 4th. I mean, I oh. ain't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there's, know there's, there's, there's no. I don't, I don't know if that's a thing. No, 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 it's a thing. There's definitely Here, a day off. I can't, I'm not talking about Hot 97. He's just talking oh, okay. about in the real world. In regular people we like. Here. <laughs> no, we're off. We're off that Monday. Sure? You sure? This ain't Juneteenth. Where they they've made up a decision on this okay. one. Unfortunately, produce, they didn't make that decision in time for Juneteenth. But trust me, July Fourth, they're not playing around. Oh, oh official word says we're off. We're okay. off. Yo, and on the on the recap, I never recapped <laughs> this on for the for the listeners when I was up here talking crazy to the company that owns uh, Hot Nine Seven. They sent out an email later that day talking about next year they're gonna make sure it's a holiday for Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. For us? Yeah. <laughs> wow. For the okay. whole station. Black. 
Black. I'm with Black. that. So and and I didn't even properly give uh, the the media code a company that owns Hot 97 this button right here. Oh. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> Y'all should did that early, bro. Playing yourself, yo. Playing yourself. You know what I'm saying? Playing yourself. Well, let's really process how big a congratulations the whole thing is that this didn't get figured out even in the country till like the day before. It was kind of trash, like. The whole government thing and it becoming officially a holiday was like the 16th, 17th. Right. Like, it, I don't right. know. I mean, they waited right up to the wire. And then it fell on a Saturday. Yo, black people get screwed even when they're trying to do something that's supposed to be nice. Right. I mean, next year falls on a Sunday. So, you know, three day weekend, maybe? Yep. Yeah. It'll be a three day weekend next weekend or next year for sure. Uh, hit the button again. Congratulations. Okay. You played yourself. Now, you may have heard uh, of a man named Rudy Giuliani, who was once known as America's mayor. Remember that? I do remember. Very well. And the fall from grace is different. Your man yesterday, Giuliani, got unanimously disbarred from practicing law. Kicked out. Really? Because of all the lies that he told in the courtroom, out of the courtroom, everything. Dunzo. That he lied on behalf of Trump and this election stealing shenanigans they keep running. So, first of all, hit the button on that. Congratulations, you played yourself. And if you ever think that taking money from Donald Trump to be his lawyer is a good idea, let me preemptively give you. Congratulations. You played yourself. Because everybody goes to jail. Except him. Now, you want to hear something crazy, crazy? I want to go down a rabbit hole this morning? I mean, let's do Rachel it. Rachel Maddow on MSNBC last night took me down a rabbit hole. Rudy Giuliani is the second lawyer to be disbarred working for Donald Trump. Mm. How about this? This is how far back Trump's shenanigans and criminality go. Trump had a lawyer named Roy Cohn. Roy Cohn was a mobster lawyer. He also used to work for McCarthy, the senator who worked to get Julius and Ethel Rosenberg killed. What? That's how far this goes back. Yeah, you didn't know that? I did uh-huh. not know that. And Roy Cohn also 35 years ago got disbarred. Oh, I didn't know that part. I didn't yes. know that Roy Cohn got and disbarred. And you know who the character witness was for Roy Cohn when he got disbarred? Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump. Congratulations. You played yourself. Yo, they've been running these shenanigans wow. this whole time, Shiny Culture. Wow. Bro, but everyone knows. It's the same people, bro. Wow. But he's been, he's been scamming and teething his entire life. Like, he's had to have... You have to be a trash lawyer to roll with Trump because you know he's a liar. He doesn't pay people. He's not an honorable person. Half of the way he built his empire was making deals with companies where he wouldn't pay. Then he'd get sued, and he'd have to have lawyers who were so unscrupulous that they didn't care. And then the congratulations would be he wouldn't pay them either. <laughs> so who's really willing to work with a guy like that? That's high le- uh-huh. Yo, Around the impeachment, he couldn't find a good lawyer. He could get a good lawyer to represent him when he was president of the United States. It's insane. Yo, hit the button. Congratulations. You played yourself. Crazy. It's crazy. Laura, what you got today? That was me. I was going to talk about Giuliani. Oh, I'm sorry. Hit me with the button. Jeez. Congratulations. You well, played I, yourself. I Laura style story right after Gosh. I told her, yo, do the yes. Giuliani story. No, that's, that was very. Our facts <laughs> off the air was like, yo, Laura, you do the Giuliani. I'll do something else. And yeah. still stole Well, like, e- Ebro, we, d- we do call you Ebro Trump sometimes. Because you right. have moments where you just take and you don't I even realize throw. it. I, just, I was like, what happened? Crazy. Now, speaking of Trump, someone who I always find to be very Trumpy in. Got played yesterday. Congratulations. Yesterday in a you way that yourself. I enjoyed. What happened? Um, the head of Barstool. You may recognize him. He's in the New York Post, it feels like, every day. Dave Portnoy. 
he was on Fox Business. You know, he's a big stock guy. And he was on business yesterday uh, talking with the black dude from Fox Business who I didn't... I don't know anyone on Fox Business. A dude named Charles Payne. Not for me. And um, he started getting a little bit loud with Charles Payne. And I guess this dude on Fox Business had had enough. Here you go. Uh Uh-oh. Did you were you able to catch that? You're being a little bitch. <laughs> he said. Oh. On Fox Business. One more time, kids. Okay. Congratulations. You played yourself. That's 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 Charles Payne from Fox Business calling Dave Portnoy a little bitch on national TV. I I really enjoyed that. Wow. I didn't know it was the content I needed yesterday, but I know I really, really loved seeing it. Jeez. That's what you get. Dave Portnoy always talking loud and like he knows something. But guess what? Sometimes the shoe fits. Hit the button. Congratulations. You played yourself. So all that big willy wow. talk, hop you up. Playing yourself, you Playing yourself, you Playing yourself. I don't play. Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Yo, man, y'all got to get out here and listen to this, uh, Tyler the Creator album, Lil Wayne on there going off. Yeah, yeah, that NBA record sounded Young really Boy, good. Uh, DJ Drama is hosting it. Mm. Or like it's a gangster grizzlies. Well, it, and that yeah, like we heard the first two songs and we're like, wow, drama's on a lot. We didn't realize it was going to be an entire project. It was. It was basically Shawnee. The setup is it's supposed to feel like it's just a drama mixtape, but uh, it's Tyler's album, and he's hitting. Bars, beats, I mean, feel street. Yeah, um, yeah, some of it. Well, you know, yeah. some people would be, uh, you know, if you're not really into him and been following him, you might not know because his image isn't barsy, gritty, kind of, you know what I'm saying? He, yeah. he does both. He's rapping, he he rapping both. on there, and then That's he's got some, some, L, Shani. Yeah, some nah, dope like, melodies on like there. T- yeah, I like Tyler. Definitely got bars. Cast one ninety seven minutes commercial free. Curved has happened next. People get curved every day, B. If it ever happens to you... <laughs> We'll help you out. We'll call the person. We'll track them down and figure out why you got curved. See if we can help you learn a little something, a little, you know what I mean? Self-awareness. Maybe even straighten it out every now and then. That happens. They go on another date. Yeah. T-Bro Laura Rosenberg. Good morning. Who doesn't want instant gratification? If you're looking for satisfaction, there's no need to wait. With Credit Karma Money, you can win cash reimbursements for debit purchases. Credit Karma Money is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. When you use your Credit Karma Money debit card, you can win daily instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. Just pay with your debit card, and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot, and your instant karma cash will be added back to your spend account. Credit Karma Money has already given away over $3 million in instant karma to over 50,000 Credit Karma members and counting. Open your FDIC insurance spend account for free. There's no minimum balance requirements, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. Credit Karma Money. Progress starts here. Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Inc. Member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits apply. Where is he? Oh, NBA playoff action coming up this weekend. That's right. Shout out to the Suns with the big win last night. I mean, the loss. Sorry, Clippers with the win last night. Clippers with the win last night. So no Suns in four. No Suns in four guy. So if you've got a Suns in four tattoo, you're disappointed. That happened? I think people were out here, man, doing everything Suns in four. Yo, all Not- I want all I want to say is, um, sons and four guy, whoop somebody ass again, so y'all can, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Get Yo, I saw vi- I saw videos of the sons and four guy taking selfies at the stadium. Yeah, Yo, he was he was so happy. He didn't even know what was going on. He's like, "Why are people coming up?" Yo, and then the and, and then guy. I saw I saw another video. I didn't watch it, but I saw there was dude who got beat up by sons and four guy speaks <laughs> out in interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, be the Suns and Four guy or the dude who got beat up by the Suns and Four guy? <laughs> no, I'm like, God, who wants to be that guy? Yo, that one, dude, man. the beat up. Now, how did he have to? How was the dude that uh, got beat up by the Suns and Four guy's face? It actually, did, it didn't look too bad. Okay. But like, 
The fact is, you have to know that for the rest of your life, not only were you beat up by Sons of Four Guy, who became a hero because he beat your ass, but you were, but you also, after he hit you eight times, he held you in place while he punched your friend, and then he came back to you after holding you in place. That's and tough. He, yo, melted him. Oh, melted him. <laughs> Wow, man. I'm excited for more Milwaukee Atlanta this weekend though. This watching Trey Young become into a superstar in front of our eyes is kind of fun. Now I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm seriously enjoying it. I I'm not enjoying uh the moment that I we have to hear everybody in ATL. Not only did they take hip hop, but and they're running hip hop right now. But they run the NBA too. <laughs> a lot I mean, of pressure Atlanta's on Giannis. got it, man. Giannis better save us from Atlanta <laughs> Atlanta talking got it. forever. Yo, but wouldn't it be the worst thing is going to be because this this happens to the Falcons is if Atlanta makes it all the way to the finals and doesn't close. Oh yeah, no uh, one cares again. Yeah, they just. Oh they just, man, that'll be heartbreak. That'll be heartbreak. Call right now. We got some love for you. We'll get you in the building. Ooh, it's DJ, DJ John. 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 DJ John. John. The DJ John. The DJ John. Nice shirt, John. Thank nice you. shirt, John. Thank John you. is wearing a Polo. picnic table print. Oh, thanks. Mm. Button up today. Are you going somewhere special? Did your lady dress you this morning? What happened here? No, uh, I have a busy day, though. I do have a busy day. I have an a, a in-store event with Puma. And okay, then, so you dress nice for that? Yeah, and then I'm DJing Michael Che's comedy show at Caroline's tonight. So Michael Che, what's up, man? So, yeah. Mm. Uh, now, John, I have a question for you. This is not an insult. This is a real question. Can you button that shirt? Like, is that an option? Uh, full yeah. like can yeah i'd be curious to how it looked with the full-on button because what he has is the picnic table print but it's open with the shirt under it well that's just which is look. fashionable yeah yeah let it flow man looks yeah, good style. let me look but you want to know if it can uh well i just think it might look good i've never seen because i've seen him do this before i've never i don't think i've ever seen him go full button up well when he wears suits and stuff yeah i've seen him go full button up with suits yeah but it's not a suit guys it's a cash shirt it's not it's, so it's, it's casual not, cash. casually open Casual. There you go, John. Oh, Talk fashion to Rosenberg. Put Rosenberg in the, in his place. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I have something. Yo. You better shut your white mouth. Oh. Wow. Thank you, John. Well done, John. All right. Well wow. done, John. You shout know what? To John. Wow, John. What are you giving away, John? What do you got for the people? Tickets go on sale this morning, 10 a.m. for what, John? Hot 97. 2021 Ooh. Summer Jam Baby It's going down August 26th Migos Meek no, Mill Ace Boogie Yeah Met Life Stadium wow. baby Sweetie August. Rosenberg Real Late Set With wow. Griselda Ooh. Mr. Right. Festival Drewski and Friends Megan Wright and Friends Swiss Beats presents The DMX Tribute For New York City Fire. The Friends and okay. Friends we out to you. We out to you. Yeah. Today, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And it's friends going and down. more. It's going down. We need y'all in the building. The post-pandemic summer jammy. Ooh. Talk about it. Situation. Yo, um, Moneybag Yo's in the building, too. That's going to be phenomenal. Also, Faruko, El Alpha, and CJ. Presented by the heavy hitters. Rowdy Rebel. Bobby Schmurda. Special performance. And many more to be announced. Really? Well, there's and friends. Mm. There's a few plus and many more. And special guests. So and special guests. Yo, we got it covered, B. And it just be a party. You know what I'm saying? Facto. In general. Facto. We got Alyssa on the line. Alyssa, good morning. Yes. Hello? Hello, hello, Alyssa. Hello. Hola. Hi, 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 hi. Hey, 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 Alyssa. Hi, guys. I'm just excited. I never got Well, we're excited to have you, Alyssa. Thank you for joining the program. Answer this question super fast, Alyssa, so you could be in the building at the post-pandemic Summer Jammy. Summer Jammy. All right, Alyssa, here we go. The Olympics will happen in what city this year? Or happening? Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Man. Alyssa, correct. I miss Tokyo, man. DJ John. Remember Summer Jam Tokyo, Eero? Yeah, it was Summer great. Summer Jam Tokyo was Liddy. It was. We'll be can back you, one day. Yeah. Can you tell us, DJ John, yes. who founded the International Olympic Committee in 1894? Mm. Oh, he ain't gonna get 
Wait, what? <laughs> Yo, she just, I, you can't answer for me. Like, I'm not even done. Let me think about this question because it's a very 18, 19, 94, 17, 84. Yeah, I don't got nothing for you because I don't. Pierre de Coubertin. Yeah, Pierre de Cubert. Cuber- <laughs> wow. Cubert. Oh. Alyssa, you going to Summer Jam? Summer Jam. Oh. Alyssa. <laughs> Alyssa? We lost Alyssa. Thank Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Alyssa, you in the building. Who you taking with you? Thank you. Probably my daughter. Um, yeah. I got teenagers. She just finished school, so. How old is she now? 17. She'll be 17. Okay, she can, she's Summer Jam. That's a Summer Jam. Oh, yeah. Summer jam. 17 for sure. In there. For sure. It's the people I see when they got Thank their 10 and 11 year old in there. In there. I'm like, nah. nah, nah you're nah, gone man. too far. Yo, you're nah. gone too nah. far. <laughs> Alyssa, we got to get some info. Hang on. On the way. Flashing lights, Laura Stavs. Coming up in the Flashing Lights report, guys, uh, Derek Chauvin is getting sentenced today in the George Floyd. Uh, murder. I'll give you details on what's happening. Coming up, flashing lights. You know what I need right now, though, Cast One? Mm. I need that whiz kid. It's Friday. We need to hear that essence, B. Come on, B. Temp. Ooh, <sighs> oh Vibes? This is like. This right here will get you right. Woosa. Shout out to Yes. Africa. Yo, Sh- Shawty, why the creepy whisper? Yeah, <laughs> man, you mad creepy. You saying for my people? Shout out to Africa. Yeah, I am yo. That hey. makes it even creepier. Shout, Shout out, out to Africa. Africa. Yo, it's nuts. It's like, it's like uh, porno. I don't understand what's going on. Oh, see hey. where your mind is at? Whoa. Shout out to Africa, yo. There you go. Hey, Normal out loud. Today tastes like heading out the door and driving into town. It tastes like grabbing snacks and a Coke and singing as loud as you can. Today tastes like anything could happen. And it never tasted this good. Summer tastes better with Coca-Cola. Wherever you're going this week, don't forget to grab an ice-cold, refreshing Coca-Cola from Albertsons or Safeway. Absolutely. Like song by song. Like, yo, we should do a versus for Reasonable Doubt. It's 25 years today. Right? It's a big deal. What do you mean a versus for reasonable doubt? Explain. Yeah, like what, Where yeah, like what, one person happening? picks a song, you're like, yo, I got one better. <laughs> um, like we go through each track okay. and talk about each song, how, how dope they are, the level in which they hit, because they all hit on different levels. I don't know. Just analyze reasonable doubt. We're in New York on Hot 97, the 25th anniversary of the first album of Let's Be Real. Love them, hate them, however you feel. The GOAT. That's it. That he is. That's, he t- I mean, he, like Jay Z has taken rap the farthest, period, in the discussion. I'm not saying he's the number one rapper who's ever lived. I'm saying he's the goat. Like this is he taking it further, as Ebro just said. Absolutely, a huge body of work, huge influence, global superstar, married to the biggest superstar in the world right now. Businesses beyond belief. You know, people don't give him credit, but really does oh, great and wait things for socially. It, wait for it. The one, the thing that everyone always talks about, he owns his music. That's big. Sure does. Does he own Reasonable Doubt? He does not own Reasonable Doubt. Okay. Who, Priority still owns that? No, nah, I think Dame owns I Reasonable think, Doubt. I think there was some drama happening recently with that, too. Yeah. I, I, think, I, just, I think. I'm not I, sure. I think. I recently watched the movie backstage. It was so interesting to see them together in their prime and how different Jay and Dame are. And I firmly believe that Dame was needed for Hove to make it to where he made it in the early days. But it's amazing they lasted as long as they did just when you watch them together, seeing personality-wise how different they are. Yep. It's fascinating. But you know, like you said, they they were uh, they were business partners. You know what I'm saying? It, it was good. It was working for business. Well, he changed. one from Harlem, one from Brooklyn. You know, they they had, you know, they had a plan. Well, and Jay needed Dame to be the outspoken salesman 
as I think a lot of artists really do need. They need that salesman next to them. Tell their tells story. everyone how dope they are. That's right. Mm-hmm. That way you, gonna... you could just be the dope artist. You ain't got to tell you ain't got to tell your own story. Somebody else telling your story. But yeah, I recommend backstage if you want to go back to a time that feels this what it's probably 18 years ago, 19 years ago. It feels like it's a million years ago. Let's get into flashing lights now. Laura Styles. Laura Styles got the 411 on the flash lights. Lights. I know you're lights. So finally, it's here, guys. Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer who murdered George Floyd. Uh, they're closing the chapter in this case because um, his sentencing will happen today. Mm. Now, What's he facing? What's he? How many? 40 so some? facing, yeah, decades in prison. A lot of legal experts are predicting 20 to 25 years. I think he's facing 40, but people are thinking he's just going to get like 20 or 25 years. We know how yo, Pee Wee Yo, Pee Wee, we, we, we rock with you, my G. Word. Yeah, he's, you know, he has no, a lot Pee-wee's to say about tight. this. Yeah. You know? just, it's going to be a, it's going to be a very interesting day today. Predicting 20 to 25 years. That's the prediction. What do you guys think? Over, <laughs> under. Uh, more than, who's, who's got more than 25 on this program? How could, how could anyone who lives in America reasonably predict that right. he gets more than expected? Right. Un- under 15. You're going under 15, Sean? Yep. At okay. max 15. Max 15. 15 and below. That he'll do. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think he's going to do the 25 just because of how, you know, how popular this high profile. story, high profile this, this story, this case was. You know what I mean? So I think that they might give him the 25. Will you be, are you satisfied Ebra with 25. No, none of this. No. I, I said months ago, maybe maybe longer. No matter how this plays out, we won't. I won't be satisfied. We right. watched Derek Chauvin murder someone slowly. Yep. Slow. Time to think about it. On camera. People walked up to him multiple times. Oh, yeah. Hey, yes. what are you doing? Yes. What are you doing? Why are you still doing this? Hey, can you? Yo, the EMT showed up like, yes. yo, can we check the dude out? He's still on his neck. Right. A, a woman that was an EMT without uniform said, I am an EMT. What you are killing him. Let me check his pulse. And they so were like, mean, no. You mean to tell me there are people that think that, that, that there's a world where this person, Derek Chauvin, shouldn't be serving a life sentence or more right or more you know what i'm saying i mean well yeah or more is the yeah. death penalty yeah i know listen i was going to say i'm not i'm not generally in favor of the death penalty but i will say from a satisfaction standpoint in this case it's hard for you to think anything but them flipping the switch on this guy would would do it listen he's 45 years old okay if he gets 20 he's only going to be 65 when he gets out Probably That's the sad part. The full 20. And he won't even, and even if they sentence him yeah. to the full 20, he's not serving it no, all. He's getting out yeah. on good behavior. Yeah. Right. So there's, yeah, when we went into this, we, 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 I think, didn't we on this program, yeah. we even cautioned ourselves, like, yo, there's no result. Brace yourself. There's no result that is actually satisfactory. We just want to see how the system functions. Right. right. It's more about the principle of what they do, but it's not going to be satisfying. Nah. And it's it's too often. It's every time. It's not even too often. It's every time. We just want to be sure that it's at least according to official rules illegal to kill black people for no reason. Right. That's uh, that's the baseline anyone was hoping to see here. How about no? The baseline was because we already know they don't care about killing black people for no reason. We already know that. The baseline was. Will they convict someone who killed a man slowly on camera who happened to be black? Mm-hmm. It was a slow death, y'all. Yeah, public. Everyone saw it. Nine minutes. But he also slow. But he didn't happen to be black even. Because the whole thing doesn't happen if he's not black. Right. It was a slow death. Yep. 
<sighs> so we'll see, guys. We, we'll get an answer today. At your flashing lights report, the time is 8.04, high of 79 degrees. Alternate side parking rules are in effect. They're making sure it's on a Friday, too. Reasonable doubt, 25 yep. years. Let's do this. About to get into it. Keep it locked. HD one New York. Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Hot 97. Today tastes like heading out the door and driving into town. It tastes like grabbing snacks and a Coke and singing as loud as you can. Today tastes like anything could happen. And it never tasted this good. Summer tastes better with Coca-Cola. Wherever you're going this week, don't forget to grab an ice-cold, refreshing Coca-Cola from Albertsons or Safeway. Man, I, I just wonder if you, if you had told me when I was 16 and this album came out that 25 years later I'd be on Hot 97 discussing the importance of it. I want to know what I would have believed less. That I would be on Hot 97 talking about anything or that I would be talking about the first album from the greatest ever. At that moment. Right. Because no one was thinking when Reasonable Doubt came out, not one soul was thinking, well, this is the first album from the guy who's going to go on to be the greatest. And people did think that about when Biggie and Nas dropped. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if you could say no one ever thought that because when Illmatic and Ready to Die came out, people consumed it going, am I listening to the guy who's going to be the greatest? Right. Well, and right. also, right. Right. I, would so assert, I would assert here, and this is something we can all learn from, the reason Hove took it as far as he did and took it the farthest of anyone in rap is because it was a slow beginning. Mm -hmm. It forced him to be uh, the most creative, uh, have the most ingenuity, the most business savvy. It forced him to be, you know, um, more deliberate and careful right strategic and strategic yeah man if for like when you're when you know when all the accolades and everything come fast pause super pause mm. um <laughs> you know it sometimes it clouds people man it it it, it makes the knife dull mm -hmm. and i think that's why today you still have somebody like hove who knows how to be patient and knows how to really take his time with things yeah, no, it definitely benefited him in many ways that he was able to grow as time went on. Although, listen, there are a lot of people who will also tell you that this is his best album. You know, I, I think he I think he really got there at Blueprint. I think Blueprint's the one. But this one is uh, damn good. And remember, Ebro, not only did it not happen right away, he'd already been in the game grinding for a minute when this came out. That's facts. Super facts. Word, it's already years after Hawaiian Sophie. It's a few yeah. years after he'd done uh, the original Flavor, Can I Get Open. Right. It's a few years after he dropped the In My Lifetime single on Payday. So he'd already been grinding for a minute when this even came out. Where are we going, Cashmere right, Thoughts? Where are we going? Where are we, going? we got Cashmere Thoughts? Shawnee? Nope. That's the one. You could give him a taste, so. but that's the one, that's the one we don't have. We don't have that clean. What about Coming of Age? We don't. I got that. Okay. You got coming of oh, age? Got it? Yeah. Okay, hit it. Woo! Blake. What up, Blake? I love that record. Always did. It's a great record. So since we don't have cashmere thoughts, do we play Bring It On? Mm, that's my job. Regrets. Mm -hmm. Or Can I Live Part 2 with Blake? Easy. We don't have regrets clean. And we have oh, Bring damn. It On. And Can I Love 2 was a bonus. We got to play Bring It On. <laughs> Shouts to Sauce Money Jello. and Jazz. Primo. Yo, man, 25 years. Shout to Jay-Z. Ho! Greatest. You guys, Kevin wants to play Ride or Die. Yeah. All right, yeah. Kevin, you told us that you're on parole. Right. You've been with the same girl how long? Going on 11 years now. Michelle, oh, yeah. and now Michelle was your ride or die the whole time you was on lock. Yeah. Ooh. She's already I mean, a ride or die. Why you got to test her? That was a test in itself. She held me down. 
I mean, but you want to test her again. I got to keep testing her, yeah. You got to keep testing her. That's this raggedy. guy. That sounds so raggedy. But we're going to do it because it's fun. All right, Kevin, what's the scenario? How are we going to test her? What are we going to do? Maybe um, maybe the police is on their way to your crib. Maybe your PO and them is on their way to the crib. They want to do a check-in on you, a surprise check-in. All right. So. And listen, why don't you say that she has to come and get rid of a stash? All right. All right, good, All right. good. I All like right, so it. let's I do like it. it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. We're calling Michelle. Hang on, y'all. You have 30 seconds to see if she'll drop what she's doing and come ride for you, okay? All right. Hello? So, what's up? Look, my little worker, he just got arrested. Parole is coming to the house. You got to go home. I got something under the bed. You got to get rid of it. What the f***? Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, my God. I got Malia. Wait a minute. I got... Hold on. Hold on. I got Malia. Oh, my God. Hold on. How long do I have? Can you go? Can you go or not? Yeah. It's under the bed. Are you going to go get rid of it? Yeah, I'm going to go right now. Hold on. Yeah! Yo, Kevin, looks like you got a ride or die, my G. Yeah, she's still riding. Michelle. What? Kevin wanted to see if you was his ride or die. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you f***ing serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you always gave her a heart attack, Yo, man. Yo, she was stressed, Oh, my bros. God. Do not f***ing play with me like that. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, Michelle, listen. We already told Kevin that it was foul because you <laughs> rode for him while he was on lock. <laughs> Yo, laugh. she's relieved, man. <laughs> it's that nervous laugh. Aw. <laughs> Kevin, tell your woman you love her, man. I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> Want to test your ride or die? Email us now at bridorderdie at gmail.com. Who doesn't want instant gratification? If you're looking for satisfaction, there's no need to wait. With Credit Karma Money, you can win cash reimbursements for debit purchases. Credit Karma Money is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. When you use your Credit Karma Money debit card, you can win daily instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. Just pay with your debit card, and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot, and your instant karma cash will be added back to your spend account. Credit Karma Money has already given away over $3 million in instant karma to over 50,000 Credit Karma members and counting. Open your FDIC insurance spend account for free. There's no minimum balance requirements, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. Credit Karma money. Progress starts here. Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Inc. Member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits apply. B E ride or die at gmail.com. Berg, Laura Rosenberg on assignment right now, but I wanted to make sure this conversation happened for New York City. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Misha Porter. She is the current New York City school chancellor. Is that yes. what I'm saying? Is that the, that's the, the, the right title? And you, um, now, uh, Mr. Carranza used to come on the show a lot. He stepped down, and now you're the new big boss of all the schools. Bronx native, correct? Bronx native, Bronx still. <laughs> now tomorrow, born and, raised, born and raised in Queens, so I, I gotta acknowledge South Jamaica Queens, or else people get mad at me. There you and go. Far Rockaway, Far Rockaway. Far Rockaway. Rock. Our everybody. brother Shani, our brother Shani Culture's in the background going Queens, Queens. Queens. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tomorrow, or uh, well, this will air. Tomorrow's the last day of school, or today's the last day of school uh, for public school. Any message from you to the parents, the kids, and the teachers after this tough year? You know, my message probably has been the same since since I sat in this role and since I was leading in the Bronx. I just want to thank the parents, the teachers, our students. They, our students and families have been so resilient. Our parents has jump, have jumped in and, and been go, co-teachers with our, with our teachers and faculty. And our teachers have also really reinvented and recreated classrooms into these digital spaces. So I just want to say thank you. I'm looking forward to next year. But I also want to acknowledge the folks that we don't always mention, and it's our school safety agents who've been mm. in the buildings every day, our custodians who've been cleaning, all, all these folks have been there since the pandemic. They never left, they never went remote. Our nurses, our kitchen workers, so many people who've just been on the front lines and have never gone home, but have been working to make sure, you know, our families are fed, our buildings are clean and safe. And so I just think it's so important to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. 
Um, with now uh, you being appointed by Mayor de Blasio and us headed towards a uh, a change in the administration after this election, um, your job may or may not be yours. They may appoint someone else, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, and you've just had a short time on the job. Are you yeah. someone, and, and I don't know if it's even the right thing, where you propose or you have a proposal that goes to the next administration about the changes and the things that you're going to do? How does this work in transition? Yeah. Well, for me, you know, I am a 20 year DOE veteran. Um, and, you know, I, I when I took on this job, I was like I was very clear that my priorities were to get us open and get us going. But, you know, as a 20 year educator, we, we have to have a plan and a path forward. And so we are developing one. We are not living in uh, election cycles. We are living in what's best for students and for children every single day. I'm a teacher, I'm a principal, and now I'm the chancellor. And so I bring all of that to the table, you know, as we vision our system forward. Um, let's talk about school safety. Uh, there's been a, a, a lot of talk about changing over from the NYPD overseeing school safety. Uh, a lot of people who work with school safety say the Department of Education used to run school safety and it was a mess. And that's why the NYPD has seen it. But some people with the, you know, with the police accountability issues and the criminalization of youth and the school to prison pipeline, seeing uniforms walking around our schools, I think, has, you know, in this moment in history kind of turned some people off like, yeah, no, we are we're familiarizing our youth with, uh, you know, police and the policing and that sort of thing too early. Uh, where are you with this and what's best? What have you seen work and what do you think is the best way forward? So I think w- what I've seen is school safety agents who've been a real part of our school communities and and will continue to be that. And so for me, this moment is really important about changing the way we secure our schools, um, keeping our buildings safe always, but also recognizing in this moment that criminalizing um, our students is something that we absolutely cannot do in our school buildings. And so we need to build safe and supportive environments around them. Our school safety agents are a major part of that. And and I, and for me, that's what this moment is about. That's what this transition is about. We, we students, our families don't send their kids to school to, to be arrested. They send them to school to learn. And we want to create environments that are conducive for learning, but also acknowledge our students make mistakes. Um, and we have to they have to learn from those mistakes. We have to teach them from for the. We have to teach them about those mistakes. Um, but we also don't want to, like to your point, we don't want to start the school. The, the the school to prison pipeline shouldn't start in school. We we don't want that to happen, and it happens, you know, too often. And we have to change that narrative. And part of that is changing the way school safety functions in our building and building deeper partnerships. So does that mean that you are for the NYPD maintaining uh, oversight over school safety? or you want that to change? You know, it's in the process of changing and I look forward to being a part of the conversation on how that happens. Got it. So it, it's it's definitely happening. The how is still being worked on. Yes. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um, let's talk about uh, New York City having the, the headline always says New York City has the most uh, uh, public school system in the nation. Uh, Mm -hmm. What do you say to that headline? Uh, Chancellor Carranza would come on and often talk about him believing that it's true and talk about how it was true. Uh, But it feels like there's pushback from some of the more wealthier parents that use public schools uh, in trying to get uh, kids from different um, economic classes and racial backgrounds intermixed in some schools. How are we dealing with that? You know, what I've said over and over, first of all, it's true. We know it's true. Like New York City knows that 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 is true for our system. And it's something that we've been working really hard to to change. Um, You know, it it starts with not having a single measure for admissions into any particular school. It continues with diversity initiatives across the system. It, 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 It also is about creating every school in every community to be one that families and students can be proud of sending their children to. And so we have to do the work to to change our system. um, And we can't have these gates that 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 create spaces where we are creating a a more segregated system. We have to open up the doors um, to New York City public schools in in a different way. And what timeline is that on? And where are you in that uh, journey of unraveling these issues? You know, we we are looking at our gifted and talented programs. It's been very controversial, but it's important. 
you know, there are so many gifted students across the city. So we're looking at our gifted and talented programs. We're looking at, you know, our, our schools have already started to look at their admissions criteria. So they have multiple measures for entry into programs into our schools. And so, you know, all of those things are happening now and will continue to happen. Um, it feels like some of the more controversial uh, issues exist in Manhattan with districting. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't and I don't know the outer boroughs if, if I've if I've heard so much in the outer boroughs with the districting where you'll have kids in a lower economic bracket uh, living, you know, a block away from kids in a higher economic bracket um, and not being able to attend the same school. And they live a block away and that the districting of that has pushed them to a, a different type of school that maybe is for, you know, and I'm using air quotes, kids from lower income versus kids mm -hmm. in higher income. How are we addressing those districting issues? Well, you know, I want to shout out the Manhattan principals who have, you know, they've done the work themselves to say, you know, we want to we want to change the zones. We want to change the requirements. We want to have more diverse school communities. We want to open up our doors. And so our Manhattan principals have begun to, to, to lead that effort. And I'm really proud of them, super supportive of them under the leadership of our executive superintendent, Marisol Rosales. You know, but Manhattan isn't the only place, but they've definitely, you know, through our diversity initiatives, our integration programs, you know, they have, we have been able able to shift the borders to, you know, just to speak to, to the district thing and open up the doors so students have more access uh, to, to our schools in Manhattan and across Manhattan. Um, you know, a charter schools, you hear there's, uh, you know, corporations really love charter schools. Um, there are people in higher economic brackets love charter schools and private schools. And most of the time when I'm talking to parents about it, it's because um, and I and as a parent, it, you feel as if in a private or a charter school, as a parent, you have more say so and less bureaucracy when it comes to uh, the curriculum your kids are being taught or, you know, the 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 swiftness at which it feels like a school adjusts to new learning methods, new technologies, et cetera, et cetera. As chancellor of a public school system, the largest in the nation uh, that deals with tons of bureaucracy. Uh, what do you what can you say to parents who maybe have lost faith in our public school system? You know, I, I see my job when I took on this role as chancellor to really shift um, our system to really working in service of schools and in service of communities. And, you know, that means cutting bureaucracies. That means ensuring that our parents at the t are at the table and have, an, have a voice in the curriculum that's being taught in our schools, um, including ensuring that our curriculum is one in which students see and experience themselves every day. And so parent voice is welcome. Um, but I, we are doing a lot of work to eliminate the bureaucracies at the central office, some of which I've learned about when I got there. Right. Uh, but, you know, our leaders, our principals, I was a principal in the Bronx for 11 years and we were able to do amazing things. And so we also have to, you know, really recognize the moment where our leaders can really partner with communities to make changes because change happens at the local level. It happens at the school level. It absolutely, it. it doesn't happen at the central office. The Got central it. office creates the conditions for the change to happen, but the change happens at the school level. That's a, it. I mean, I think that's a very important point because I don't think as a parent, I understand that how much. Uh, latitude a particular school has or a principal has or a teacher has right like you don't you don't necessarily understand how much uh influence the faculty in a school has um and you're saying that they have a lot of influence absolutely you know i was a principal you know we 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 were, we chose the curriculum that we taught in our school we engaged our families as part about that process our students were part of that process. Our students asked for a black history course at our school and we created it. Our students wanted to have a fencing program. We created it. We had a, you know, a, an amazing policy debate team that grew out of what our students and families asked for. So there's definitely space to create at the local school level what students want, schools want. Our job at the central level is to provide support to make it happen for schools. Um, during the pandemic, you heard a lot about students not getting the resources in mostly tablets like that was like the big headline there's not enough tablets kids aren't getting tablets uh what's what are the facts um what actually happened what and and where did our public schools uh and our ability to get students fall short yeah. So we got over 500,000 devices into the hands of students and that doesn't include and I, I know this for a fact 
principals who, when we were heading into remote learning, they were giving out devices from their buildings because they wanted to make sure students had devices, including our elected officials who also were like, we want to help get hands on the devices of students. I think where, where we fell short, and, and it, it is a systemic issue, was in ensuring that every student had not only a device, but access to a device with Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. and program. Right. Um, and you know, the 500,000 devices that we put in the hands in, of students were Wi-Fi enabled. But as a system moving forward, we have to ensure that we are one to one, period. You know, that is the path forward for education. And it's not about remote learning. It's about ensuring that new technologies are a part of our students learning experiences. What does one to one mean? What does that mean? One to one means, you know, I, I, I liking it to when you and I were in school. Right. We got a number two pencil. Right. If you didn't have a, a sharpener, you didn't have a number two pencil. You right. just had a stick of wood unless you were creative and knew how to work a knife and a pencil, right? <laughs> you know, some of us knew how to do that. You knew how to do that. <laughs> yeah, but, nah, you could take a file, take a fingernail file or, uh, or an envelope yeah, open on, or when you scrub it on the pavement, you could scrub it exactly. on the pavement and sharpen the wood. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of time <laughs> to get there. Time. But you know, the number two pencil of the 21st century is a Wi-Fi enabled device, period. And we have to make sure that every student has that and that the path forward in in our public schools is about leveraging that device, leveraging the interaction between the student and the teacher using a device as a teaching tool. Today tastes like heading out the door and driving into town. It tastes like grabbing snacks and a Coke and singing as loud as you can. Today tastes like anything could happen. And it never tasted this good. Summer tastes better with Coca-Cola. Wherever you're going this week, don't forget to grab an ice-cold, refreshing Coca-Cola from Albertsons or Safeway. Got it, got it. And so um, for this coming school year, um, Mm -hmm. I heard there was a headline that there's no more snow days. Oh, Lord, the snow days. Ebro, you're going to have to come play in the snow, too. I promised everybody that we, we, there are no more snow days. The pandemic has taught us how to leverage. You, I know, remember Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. Our school shut down for a week. That's and right. we had no recourse. We had no way of teaching during that time. Now we do. And so I, what I promised everybody is no more snow days where there isn't learning. But how about snow days where there's learning and fun? Okay. I promise. Talk to us. Talk to us now. So so you're meaning like I check in in the morning on my tablet at home. You do some work. And then I get to go outside and shovel and play. Exactly. Shoveling is an important part of it because <laughs> we got to get that snow up. Now, for, now for the parents, um, how do, you know how does how how do they plan for that? Because if they're having a you know uh, to go to work still, um, or you know what what kind of support will they get from public schools if if you have a parent that's not even able to stay home for a snow day, or you know what they have going on. You know, we, we'll, we're we going to work with our parents. And, I, you know, what our parents have done also really throughout this pan- pandemic is work together and support each other. You know, that old school community where you knocked on your neighbor's door and yeah. you checked on them, you know, that became really evident in, in the way we engaged throughout the pandemic. And so we want to make sure we also, during the pandemic, created rec centers. So I'm, I'm sure if we hear from parents that, that there's a real issue about I got to go to work still and, you know, there's no day, you know, of remote learning when I need to be on um, is it, going to be hard. We're looking forward to working with parents and, and our teachers will be on, too. Right. So, no, you know, teachers might be a little upset with me, too, about the snow day. But I promise we're going to all have a little fun on this. Well, I think day. we romanticize the snow day. Right. Because as kids, yeah, we yeah. knew what that meant. I mean, we it was like, right. yo, snow day. Oh, I'm laying back right now. I'm kicking back. <laughs> you know, well, now I, New York City. I went to New York City public schools. I remember one snow day my whole academic life. Nah, one. see, no, 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 Chancellor, no. If I'm I'm telling you there was more. And even if there I wasn't hope- more in my mind, I feel like there was more. So don't do that. I, I'm telling you, I remember one. I remember being in the backyard. I remember how much snow there was in the backyard. <laughs> uh, if there were two, that was a lot. 
but there were <laughs> never, never many in New York City. And and as an educator, because we also looked forward to those snow days, uh, there were very few. But I do think what's important about this moment is, you know, we have new technology that will allow us to keep our students learning um, and not experience what we experienced during Hurricane Sandy. And that is the complete shutdown. And so that that's what I think is important. As a chancellor, I'm sure you hear from parents that feel like education is now just getting kids ready to take tests. Um, you know, where are we, you know, with the standardized testing and parents and uh, New York City public schools and testing and, and all of that? And then I, and also on top of that. Right. I also hear from parents you know, they don't have the resources that some of the rich households have, so they don't have the tutors to get their kids, you know, the extra help uh, to get, you know, better scores on tests so that they can get into some of these more elite programs. Yeah. Um, in what ways are you making sure that the kids uh, that don't have the resources get the support? Well, this is a great time for resources in New York City. You know, we have finally gotten to the place where our schools are fully funded, thanks to the work of our legislators across the state. And so our schools are going to receive 100% fair student funding. We have tons of stimulus resources. And so we want to make sure that we provide that additional academic support to every student that needs it um, going forward. And so we don't want our families to feel like, you know, they have to compete with, with richer families. We want them to know that we're going to provide tutoring services. We're going to provide academic enrichment services. We're going to provide additional support as needed. We, we're going to be here to wrap ourselves fully around our students. We're also going to provide social emotional support by ensuring that we have additional social work supports in our school buildings. And so we are ready to wrap ourselves fully around our 1.1 million students in, in New York City public schools. Um, and, and how do we as the taxpayers, um, yeah. you know, get access to understanding how this money is managed uh, mm -hmm. that's coming in from the stimulus, right? Because we all, we've all heard the horror stories, right? Yes. $10 million mm -hmm. was, was blown by giving to some consultant who was a friend of the head of the this and nothing actually happened or all the teachers went on a retreat and blew two million dollars on some retreat at some nice hotels and we hear the horror stories right but how can we track this money what kind of transparency is there uh and 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 where can you know even me as a media person right i would love to be able to tell parents in the morning hey this program has started or hey here's this new program etc cetera, etc cetera, so where we can actually share information to get these kids uh you know into the programs that will are going to be new and we have funding for yeah so i've been on a listening tour um around how families want to hear see us leverage those resources. So that was the starting point. The starting point for me was giving people a voice in how we allocate the resources. The second step is going to be that that's going to be public school budgets are public. We'll, we'll send the link to you so you can share it with, with the listeners. Um, school budgets are public, central office budgets are public. Uh, but in this moment, we have a responsibility to make sure that we're leveraging the resources that we've been given to do the work that we need to do for our students. And that includes having strong literacy programs, strong academic programs, strong math programs, um, providing ac access to en strong enrichment opportunities, um, music and arts programs mm -hmm. like we've never seen before. And so we have an opportunity to create the schools that we all talk about, you know, that we, that our students deserve. And so, you know, I think that accountability is going to come in really seeing that our schools have programming in place that families want and desire for their children. Well, we would love to any programs that you guys are rolling out, right. Uh, and any success stories, we would love to be involved uh, and sharing yep. that with the public. So um, we have a, a direct line of communication now, uh, Miss Misha Port Mrs. Misha Porter, and um, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. It's been a privilege. I'm going to plug summer rising, though. You asked about a pro. We are making a huge investment in our summer program for students K-12, full day programming, free academics, enrichment, social emotional supports, and more importantly, fun. So I'm going to plug that. Please summer share. Summer rising. Summer rising. <laughs> yes. Uh, Danielle, I see one of your people on here, Danielle. Please send us that official info. I want to shout that out. Sign, and, and this is just a, a sign-up deal, and it's free. People just got to sign up and go. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. I love it. Yeah, Danielle, please get us all the info. Uh, Chancellor, it was a pleasure. I know you have a commencement speech um, yeah. today. Uh, all the graduates, um, everybody, you know, uh, entering into the summer, all the students. I know it was a tough year um, for everybody, but specifically the teachers. The teachers, I mean, they did an amazing, amazing yeah. job, Chancellor. I don't know if you want to say any extra words for the teachers and the parents, listen. but listen. It was, inc- I, I mean, it was incredible. I am a DOE parent as well. And so I just want to say there, there aren't enough words to thank teachers for the way they've turned their living rooms into classrooms. Right. Um, you know, the way they've delivered resources to the, they've dropped off devices, they've dropped off textbooks, they've dropped off food, they've dropped off materials. You know, when we talk about showing up 100% for our students, our teachers have done that. And, you know, they, they, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful as the chancellor, but I'm also thankful as a New York City DOE public school parent. I thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, it, I tear up thinking about it, man. Real yep. talk, because the teachers pulled it through. We love you. Uh, chancellor. Have a phenomenal summer. Uh, We will be in touch. Okay, thank you. Take care. Take care. Today tastes like heading out the door and driving into town. It tastes like grabbing snacks and a Coke and singing as loud as you can. Today tastes like anything could happen. (laughs) And it never tasted this good. Summer tastes better with Coca-Cola. Wherever you're going this week, don't forget to grab an ice-cold, refreshing Coca-Cola from Albertsons or Safeway. 